Hey everyone, I am here today to talk briefly about um, a little bit of my boot camp experience. Boot camp was pretty long, so I don't think I can cover it all in just one video. So today I will be talking about um, uh, swimming and PT, and maybe the first two weeks of boot camp. So, to start off, I was in a performing arts division, so we didn't do what other boot campers did or for the most part um i don't know what the other um other divisions did on the weekend like saturdays because we pretty much just practice on saturdays for whatever we were um going to do um in the graduation so in my division i was in a triple threat division and um what we did was we had a band, we had the rifle spinning team, and we had a group of singers. So, um, yeah. So I don't know what other people did on the weekends because that's what we did on Saturdays for the most part. Um, we either, or we definitely practiced, and then on, um, on, or in the afternoon, we practice drilling for our for a competition that everybody has to do so um yeah so for swimming there are a couple of just okay three things that you have to do when you have to pass the swimming portion uh you have to do dead man's float there's like a dive and um 50 yards that you have to swim and there is also like a little portion where you have to like float in some overalls so for the dive you jump or it's a diving board and you have to jump off the diving board but they kind of nudge you a little bit so you don't hit the back of your head on the diving board so you get a little push but for the most part you jump um, you jump into the water and then you have to swim 50 yards to get to the other end. I was on the swim team, so I kind of thought that swimming would be fairly easy for me. But um, I guess it was easier than some people. I tried to do freestyle to get to the other end of the pool. But after getting out, after coming to the top of the water and kicking my feet, to get to the top I was a little winded so I just I tried to do the freestyle but in the end I ended up just um like getting on my back and doing like a backstroke a lacy backstroke and yeah you don't really go far into the water but you go a, you go a distance so it's it's definitely some work to get back up to the top and they show you how to, if you don't know how to swim, they show you how to swim. They give you a few ways that you can get to the other end. And there are professional, or very skilled professionals working in the water, or working in the water, in the water with you and outside of the pool to make sure that, you know, you're not dying. Excuse me. Um, have to sneeze. Okay. In the water with you to make sure you don't die. Excuse me. So, um, yeah. So, you have that. You also have the portion where you splash water into your overalls. And, or splash air into your overalls. And you're supposed to just float. That portion is so easy. Um, everybody I know passed it. Uh, what else? There is also the last portion is the portion that I kind of failed because um, I failed it one time and that same at that same time you know in that same like afternoon or morning you get to redo it and it's called dead man's float and what you do is like you stay underwater for like five minutes and um, with your head under the water you can come up for air definitely but it has to be very short and you have to put your head back under the water 
So at first what I was doing was I was just like treading water, but they tell you not to tread water. And I was doing exactly what they told me not to do. But soon, like I got the hang of it. And with my second try, I was able to pass it and I didn't have to like go back or anything like that. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole swimming portion. Uh, yeah. And the last thing that I want to talk about is PT. We had two different kinds of PTs. We had in-house PT and we had to PT in the gym. And when you PT in the gym, you do like exercises with equipment, but not like not like weightlifting equipment or anything like that. Well, I guess it is weightlifting equipment, but not like dumbbells or anything. It's more like uh, medicine balls and and stuff like that, and jump ropes, and we had to do dips on a machine, and that was pretty much it. That's you don't really work with any equipment per se, but you do work with like little things like jump ropes and balls and stuff like that. Balls. Um. What else? And for in-house PT. In-house PT is is when you're working with your um your RDC to um we did we worked with our RDCs in the afternoons, so um yeah, and sometimes they make you PT like 30 minutes after you eat. So some people threw up. I don't throw up. I never threw up. Um, when I PT, so I was pretty lucky. Some people did though. And oh, what I would tell you to P, I will definitely a word of advice t is to PT a lot before you get to boot camp because there's like a week or two weeks where you're doing absolutely nothing but eating and sleeping and going to medical. And that takes a toll on you because uh, you don't do anything. And then for the two weeks, and after the two weeks, you're supposed to take like a a test, a PT test, which determines if you get advanced from E1 to E2 or E2 to E3. But yeah, I would definitely say PT at least for a month before you get there because it's definitely an incentive to get that extra money um, and who doesn't like money and I mean there's also a written portion or written test where you have to um, pass in order to get E2 or E3 but that's it's really not that hard and hardly anybody ever fails it um, or I wouldn't say that Maybe three people out of a division will fail it. So, yeah. So, PT before you get to boot camp because there will be a period where you're not doing anything but getting fat. And that's pretty much all I have to say for. I just bit my lip. That's pretty much all I have to say about PT because, yeah. I will upload another video. Um, soon about something. I don't know what what yet. Maybe um, maybe something about more time in, in boot camp. Maybe that. But bye, you guys.